Welcome to RISE 101 module uh, number 12. Uh, my name is Griffiths Atungulu. I'm uh, the director of the Hawkins RISE Processing Program. I'm an associate professor and a cultural engineer. Uh, my area of speciality is in grain processing and post harvest systems engineering. I'm housed here in the Department of Food Science. I'm with the University of Hawkins Systems Division of Agriculture. In this module number 12, we are going to uh, discuss factors affecting rice milling quality. Uh, we are going to start by defining some terminologies. Uh, we are going to talk about mill, milling yields versus mill rice quality. Uh, we are also going to discuss, describe some of the factors that affect uh, rice milling yield and quality. So to start by, uh, let me uh, describe what uh, we call rice milling quality. Uh, milling quality is often expressed as a ratio of head rice yield to milled rice yield. And uh, this example here is giving us a 58 to 70 value of uh, milling quality. In this case, uh, uh, head rice is 58% and milled rice is 70%. And of course, the broken rice would be, uh, uh, the difference of milled rice and the head rice would be 12%. Now, rice milling quality can be influenced by any factor that affects the kernel strength. As you know, uh, we described that in terms of uh, the breakage of the kernels, and so the strength of that kernel, the integrity of that kernel is very, very important. I'm going to describe some of those factors uh, that will affect the kernel strength, and I, wanna, I want to start with the harvest moisture content and the significance of that. Now, the harvest moisture content is uh, one of those factors that is really at the producer's control in, in the whole chain of rice processing. Uh, I'm illustrating these two figures here uh, to show some uh, of the results that we obtained in the lab for rice moisture content, uh, for rice that has been harvested at different moisture content. Uh, the first uh, graph there in blue is illustrating a case where rice lot was harvested at 27% moisture content. Now the x-axis is telling us the, in, the moisture content of individual kernels within that back lot and uh, the y-axis there is telling us the frequency, the number of kernels that correspond to the various moisture contents. And so 22% is the bulk sample moisture content. But ideally, within that bulk sample, the kernels are coming in with different moisture contents. And so when we harvest rice at higher harvest moisture contents, we have what is called a multimode distribution of moisture contents. You have several uh, kernels that are lying further away from that our mean moisture content of 22%. Now, those kernels represent uh, kernels that are immature, some of them, and some of them, as you can see, are drier than the, mo the mean moisture content. And so the wider uh, the variation within that bark lot, uh, the more you expect those immature kernels which are contained in that bark lot to break during the milling process. Uh, now, when we harvest at lower moisture contents, like 14% or 16%, we tend to have what we call a uniform or distribution of those moisture contents, as you can see in that figure. Uh, and so, again, the harvest moisture content plays a critical role in the distribution of the kernel moisture contents within a bulk lot, and that distribution plays in when it comes to uh, their ability to uh, withstand the milling pressures because the Immature kernels obviously are going to break during uh, the milling process. Uh, it has been established from lab studies that the head rise yield uh, has a very, very good correlation with the harvest moisture content. The lower the harvest moisture content, you can see again that there is a reduction in the head rise yield. So uh, we have what we call the optimum harvest moisture content uh, for different rice types. Uh, and this is going to be dependent on whether it is a hybrid cultivar long grain uh, or it's a medium grain cultivar. Uh, in our region where we produce a lot of long grain cultivars here, uh, we harvest our rice uh, at about 19 to 21% moisture content. And that's what we describe as the optimum moisture content for getting maximum head rice yields. Uh, for medium grain, uh, we can afford to harvest them at about 22 to 24% moisture content. Again, it's very important to remember that these harvest moisture contents are also dependent on the drying method that's going to be employed right after the harvest. If you are going to take these samples in an ore farm drying bin that's using natural air, 
Again, we recommend that you harvest it at a slightly uh, lower moisture content. 18% would be ideal to minimize uh, issues that result from discoloration of rice in the bin. Now, another factor that uh, affects the head rice yields, of course, is the formation of fishes. Now, the formation of fishes uh, result from several reasons. Uh, number one, uh, as you would expect, uh, when you harvest rice, you get uh, all the rice that were on a panicle, and all those rice that are on a panicle or have matured at different times. And because of that immaturity, they are all have different uh, mechanical strengths. And so uh, they may easily break during the milling operation. Now, another, another factor is those kernels on that panicle, as they stay in the field, they go through adsorption and desorption. Uh, this is because of changes in temperature and relative hum humidity of the air. And again, that would cause some fishes within those rice canal that predisposes them to breakage during a milling operation. Uh, another factor is during the drying process itself, if drying is not done appropriately, uh, rapid moisture diffusion out of the kernel and also a lot, presence of a lot of heat on that kernel can cause fissure formation. And in this diagram here, we are showing some of those type of fishes that you can see on rice kernels. Uh, those fishes uh, formed on the rice kernel uh, weakens its mechanical strength, making it easy for it to break during a milling operation uh, that results in significantly lower head rise yield if the drying process is not done appropriately. Another factor that, of course, would result in lower uh, milling yields is the presence of chalked kernels in our samples. And chalk kernels basically are kernels that are opaque, they have a white appearance. Uh, this chalk can affect portions of the kernel or sometimes the entire kernel. So increases in chalkiness have been found to reduce head rise yields. Uh, now these chalk kernels uh, are formed because of several reasons. Uh, it's been found out that uh, high nighttime air temperatures at critical growth stages increases this chalk uh, and therefore that tend to decrease also the head rise yield of those cultivars that are affected. Another factor that affects, of course, our uh, head rice yield or our male rice yields are disease or insect infestations on the kernels. Uh, again, disease or insect would affect the mechanical strength of the rice kernel, making it easy to break uh, during uh, the milling process. So there are various diseases that uh, attack our, our kernels. Uh, common diseases include uh, rice blast, uh, sheep blight, uh, kennel mud, also very popularly known to cause discoloration of rice, but also significantly softens the kernel, making it easy, easy to break during uh, the milling operation. Now, there are insects like the rice stick bug that uh, affect our, our kernels, and when they do that, they soften that kernel, making it very easy to break during the milling process. Uh, just to uh, explain the difference between milling yield and milled rice quality as used terminologies in literature or in our, in our field, technically milling yields are those uh, parameters that are typically very important uh, for the grower and sometimes also for the processor. Uh, so they basically uh, involve milled rice yield and head rice yield. Uh, while mid rice quality, when we talk about milled rice quality, we are thinking about those parameters uh, that are of significance to the processor because they dictate consumer preferences to our rice, or they, they, they dictate some of the, the functionality of the rice during uh, the processing. And this includes things like the chalkiness of that rice kernel, uh, the color uniformity of that rice kernel, the amylose content, the gelatinization temperature, the gel consistency, and some of uh, the chemical related characteristics that would impact on the functionality of that rice during processing or during cooking that eventually will translate to a consumer's uh, liking or disliking of the end product. So let's now look at some of these factors that would affect both the yield and also the quality of our rice, and specifically looking at the quality aspects uh, that the consumer uh, is very, very interested in. So there are environmental factors. We are going to classify this in terms of environmental factors, uh, and then there are also those factors that come as a result of processing. So 
To start with, environmental factors would include things like the air temperatures, uh, the atmospheric carbon dioxide, the light, uh, the water, the soil nutrients. Uh, all these factors are essential for development of rice during uh, production. And so any deficiency uh, in any of these parameters, of course, is going to translate into the quality of the rice that we obtain. Uh, nitrogen application is also one of those factors that has been found to be very, very important in terms of uh, the yield of the rice that you're going to get, as well as the milling quality of that rice. The variety of the cultivars that we are dealing with, of course, are going to affect uh, the quality of, of the rice that we obtain. And so different varieties have got different shapes. Uh, the shape is going to affect the processing. Different varieties have different sizes, uh, grain width, and thickness have been found to be positively related with milled rice yields. And of course, that eventually also translates into some of the quality parameters of that rice during processing. Now, the hull characteristics, again, uh, decreased hull weight correlates with increased milled rice yields. The brown layer thicknesses, hybrid rice requires a shorter milling duration uh, than pure line rice. And again, because of the brown layer characteristics, you'd expect to have different uh, quality parameters for different uh, rice cultivars. Then the other factors are very related to the way that rice has been processed. And most of these factors uh, really depend on the degree of milling. And this degree of milling, of course, as we described in various uh, uh, slides, is dependent on the rice moisture content, that rice temperature, that rice age, uh, the kennel size and shape uniformity, the kennel brand uh, characteristics, the rice millability, the milling duration, the milling chamber, uh, the amount of rice in the milling chamber. Uh, all these are milling degree related parameters that would affect uh, the quality of the rice that is produced at the end of the day. Uh, there may be other factors uh, like uh, commingling of the rice lots uh, in our industry we get rice and we commingle them together. And different rice cultivars, of course, have different characteristics, uh, brown layer thicknesses, size, kernel sizes, uh, colors, and all those factors eventually would affect the quality of the rice that is produced. And so uh, the more uniform the sample we have, uh, the more we can optimize some of the quality parameters. And so there's a tendency in the industry right now to do what they call individual preservation of cultivars and sell them in specific market niches to fetch better prices. In the process of doing that, they can also maximize on uh, quality of rice or produce premium products. Uh, there any other factors that would cause reduction in kernel strength is expected also to affect uh, the quality of our rice. Uh, these factors could include things like uh, just fungal disease, insect, high night air temperatures, uh, harvest moisture contents. Uh, and with that, I want to give you a few references here that you can look into and find a little bit more information uh, uh, that can describe more of the things that I've discussed in this module. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to talking to you in the next modules.